What is blind contour? Blind contour is much more than just hand-eye coordination. It's a technique that involves just very simple parameters. Two of the main parameters are no looking at the paper and using a continuous line. So if you recall, a continuous line means that there's a long duration of contact with the paper. When I'm teaching in person, I often have my students put a paper plate on the top of their Sharpie so that they don't have the temptation to look at the paper and they can't see the paper through the periphery. The result of a blind contour drawing with these two simple parameters yields a very common quality of mark from student to student. Blind contour is not just a good drawing exercise to develop hand-eye coordination, it's also, for me as an instructor, an excellent gauge uh, to see where students are at with their ability to attend for such long durations of time because there's a spectrum of behavioral responses that are readily evident in students that are doing blind contour drawings. That observation, that moment of observation where a student is doing blind contour drawing in my presence establishes a path of communication. It creates a dialogue surrounding the resistances such as frustration, boredom, comprehension, interest, and motivation, patience, etc. It requires quite a bit of patience to maintain those two simple parameters of not looking at your paper while maintaining a long duration of contact with your medium on the paper. And when you're bored or frustrated or any kind of resistance is happening in your body or in your brain, it's really hard to hold that level of attention. It enables you as a student to explore your awareness and your attentional shifts and your conscious states. Because the brain doesn't like to concentrate on two things at the same time. When you're multitasking, for example, you might think that you're doing multiple things at once, but really what's happening is your brain is concentrating on one thing for a few seconds and maybe it shifts to something else and then shifts back again. So when you're attending, if you're looking down at your paper and then looking back up at your subject, you're switching your attention from one place to another. But if you maintain attention on just the thing that you're drawing and don't look at your paper, then your attention is able to hold and capture all of the nuances and change in direction on the edges that you're noticing. This also gives me an opportunity to introduce you to eye structure and function and, and how the visual cortex works in relationship to your consciousness. It's an opportunity for interaction, for testing boundaries of proximity and gaze when we're doing in-person blind contour lessons because I will often, once we learn how to draw our hands, have students draw each other's faces and it's really difficult to maintain the level of attention necessary to do the drawing because students tend to be so uncomfortable looking at each other's faces that they're giggling or they're um, communicating and it's really difficult to maintain attention on the drawing when your attention is being split between the discomfort of the gaze of looking into another person's eyes and the discomfort of being presented with someone who you've never met before and engaging in a conversation. Those are not the kinds of exercises that we can do online but I just want to explain to you how valuable blind contour is. So are three aspects happening um, kind of simultaneously when you're doing blind contour. You have the brain, the mind, and the body, and let's explain that. So uh, basically you're taking electromagnetic energy, which is light. A light from the electromagnetic spectrum, the very small parts of the electromagnetic spe spectrum, the very small parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that are visible to humans, that part of the spectrum is hitting objects and bouncing back at you. And so the light that is hitting the objects that you're looking at is entering your eye, right? It's entering your brain through your eye and it's being transduced into in the eye into electrochemical energy. And then it's being broadcast through your optical nerve to 
different parts of your brain. One of the main parts of the brain that it's being broadcast to is the visual cortex. And then your motor cortex is responding to the visual cortex information and sending signals out to your hand to transduce that energy from electrochemical into kinetic energy. So there's hand-eye coordination versus memory hand coordination, right? We're not interested in, in blind contour in, in concentrating on memory hand coordination. We are interested in specifically in training your, your hand, your eye hand coordination. Okay, so eye hand coordination, let's look a little bit at, at the function of the eye. Okay, so the line of sight, when I'm, whenever I use the word line of sight, I'm talking specifically about when you're looking straight at a target. The line that you can, the invisible line that you can trace from your pupil to the target is called the line of sight. Okay. So when light enters your eye and through your pupil, it's hitting the back of your eye and it's getting transduced here in this area to electrochemical energy that's being broadcast through the optical nerve back to the brain. Vision actually happens in the primary visual cortex, right? So when you're looking right at a target, the information about the target is being translated more clearly, right? When this line of sight is hitting this area of the back of the eye where the most of the rods and cones are concentrated. In this area, that electromagnetic energy is being transduced to electrochemical energy and being broadcast to two different parts of the brain. One part of the brain is the primary visual cortex, right? That is where when you're, the information that's hitting this part of the eye is most focused in the visual cortex here. So the seeing actually occurs in the cortex, not in the eye. The eye is just the place where the light is allowed to enter into and get transduced into a signal that the brain can recognize. When you're looking down, you're not looking at the target at all. At this point, it's memory that's happening. The visual cortex isn't activated here because you're not looking right at the object. The only time the visual cortex back here is activated is when you're looking at the target and the information of the target is hitting exactly in this spot and getting transduced. Okay, so again, the line of sight looking right at the target is where the most co concentrated information about that target is being translated, transduced and sent broadcast to the back of your brain, where, which is where your visual cortex is located. When you're looking slightly away from the target, you're still seeing out of your periphery, right? So look, the information about the target is still entering your eye, entering your eye but it's entering and hitting slightly above or below this area where the most rods and cones are. And so you still can see, but it's a little bit fuzzy, right? And so that part of that information is being uh, processed here in your, second vis your secondary visual cortex. And the further away you look from the target, the further out from the primary visual cortex uh, the parts of your brain are being processed. And so it, it's actually fuzzier looking because the part of your brain that's being stimulated is not the visual cortex, the primary visual cortex. But in this case, the periphery is stimulating the tertiary visual cortex. So let's take a closer look at the brain. This is your primary visual cortex, secondary visual cortex, tertiary visual cortex. The light is entering your eye here hitting this area, being transduced into electrochemical energy, being broadcast to other parts of your brain. So it's being broadcast to one area in your limbic system and also then to your visual cortex. Once the information or the, the signal hits your visual cortex, it gets split. The broadcast gets sent down into the memory parts of your brain and then up into towards the motor cortex parts of your brain. Okay, so your primary motor cortex is up here. So the signal goes through the parietal cortex to the 
to sensory cortex and then to the primary cortex where the body is able to respond up here. Down here, it's heading into the memory systems. Your motor cortex is associated with the control of these various parts of your body. When you're not looking at your paper and you're only looking at the subject that you're drawing, all that information, your line of sight is focused on the, on the, the, the change in contours and the change in the edges of things that are happening on the subject that you're drawing. All of that information is being broadcast in very clear view to your visual cortex. And so you, you have to trust that the function of your brain allows for your hand to follow your gaze. This is an incorrect example of doing blind contour. Often when students are first doing blind contour, they capture the outline, right? So I'm not asking you to capture just the outline. An outline is an outline, but a contour line of edges means that you're capturing all of the information that you see, not just the outer edge between the subject and the negative space around it. Okay. So let's cover this again. So here's a hand, that's an outline where you only are considering the edge that separates the actual whole hand with the negative space around it versus a contour, right? So this is not a blind contour, I'm just talking about the, the concept of edges here. So the concept of edges includes all of the creases that you see, right? And the digits and all of these wrinkles and folds and stuff. So when you're doing a blind contour and you're following along, starting off at one edge and working your way around, you wanna capture all of this detail as you go, right? So you're not just capturing the outline, you're capturing the outline, including and and including all of the edges and creases as they occur along your path. I'm doing a blind contour drawing of my hand. And so you can't see my face, but if you were to look at my face, you would see that my eyes are concentrating only on the edges the outlines, the creases, and the shadows, mainly the creases and the outlines of my hand and all the features that are on my fingers and in my palms. And I'm not looking at the paper at all. So my gaze is following along with those edges, treating them sort of like if you were a car on a, a bunch of different streets you couldn't lift the car off the ground. You would have to drive along this path and then go up and down a path when you hit a dead end and then turn around and go back the same way you came and basically just travel along the uh, landscape without ever lifting the, the vehicle off the landscape. And so you're, the tip of your pencil, in this case, it's a Sharpie, is always on the paper in a continuous line. And as you, as your gaze moves up and curves to the right, and then is a diagonal long line, and then maybe curves to the left a little bit, and then contours in, concaves in or convexes out, your Sharpie or your pencil, whatever you're holding, is following the direction of the gaze 